Chapter 12 of The Man Who Fought the Devil by Eva K. Betts The church bell rang at midnight, the hour at which the curie of ours always arose to start his day. But this time he made no move. Finally he was able to call out, and Catherine Zane, who had worked with him for many years, hurried in from an ante-room where she was waiting. My humble end has come. The words were barely audible. You must get my confessor, Father Buell. I'll get the doctor, too. It would be a waste of time, whispered the curie. He wouldn't be able to do anything for me, so don't disturb him. Father Tokenir reached the curie's room just after Catherine left on her errand. Father Vianney, he said, St. Philomena cured you sixteen years ago, and I'm sure she'll cure you now. St. Philomena won't be able to do anything this time. The pilgrims couldn't believe the news. The curie of ours, whom they had traveled so many miles to see, could not see them. For a while they were stunned. Then, forgetting their own troubles, disregarding the problems they had come to discuss, they began storming heaven with prayers for the gentle martyr inside the little house. The heat continued. Pilgrims vied with parishioners for the privilege of standing on the roof of the curie's house in the killing sun and pouring water on roof and walls in the hope of cooling the rooms a little. Night and day there was no end to the prayers, the pleading that heaven would leave a little longer in ours, the curie they loved and needed. The evening of Tuesday, August 1st, the curie asked that on the following day he be given the last sacraments. As Father Bew came with the sacred host, the streets were lined with kneeling people. How good God is, whispered Father Vianney, when you can't go to him any more, he comes to you. Tears streamed down the old man's face. Is the pain worse? asked the priest at his bedside. Is that why you cry? No, I cry because it is so sad to receive communion for the last time, said the curie. Priests from various parishes of the diocese streamed in to pray at the bedside of the dying man and to say mass for him in the little church where he had served. Parishioners and pilgrims stood in the hall outside the door of the room where he lay, and, at intervals, he would feebly raise his hand to bless them. The Bishop of Belay hurried to ours, and passing through streets crowded with praying people, hurried to the curie's bedside. He reached it shortly after midnight. Throughout France, prayers were being said for Jean-Marie Vianney. In his room, at two in the morning, a priest was reading aloud the prayers for the dying. He reached the words, May the angels of God come to meet him and lead him into the heavenly Jerusalem. Father Vianney smiled and died. The church bells tolled, but the people could not believe their message. He was near death before and was restored by a miracle. It is a miracle that he survived forty years of the life he set himself. He is so much needed, so much wanted. What will become of us? We have counted on him to cure our sicknesses of body and soul. No one could believe that the curie of ours was gone, that their living link with heaven was snapped. But someone at last gave the reminder, He has been our friend on earth. He will continue to be our friend in heaven. The light, thin body of the dead priest was carried downstairs and laid in state in one of the rooms. The venerable face, calm and benign, was left uncovered. A barrier was erected around the bier, and two of the brothers who taught in Father Vianney's school kept watch. Their arms grew weary passing backward and forward the crucifixes, rosaries, medals brought by the crowds to be touched to the hands which never again would be raised in blessing. Before dawn on Saturday, people began flocking in from all directions to pay their last respects to the greatly loved curie of ours. Three hundred priests were there, and at least six thousand people. Father Vianney, who had all his life avoided pomp and praise, could no longer control what went on. The Vianney family and the church dignitaries filled the little church building. Outside, the people knelt on the bare ground through the solemn high mass. For over thirty years before the death of the gentle warrior of ours, Pilgrims coming to see the curie had asked, Where is the saint? We want to see the saint. The curie was not long dead when a movement was started to begin the process by which Rome officially confers the title of sainthood. In 1872, Jean-Marie Vianney was declared venerable, the first step toward canonization. A black marble slab covered the grave where the curie's body lay, and to it came scores of pilgrims praying for favors, material and spiritual. Nearby, a church was rising dedicated to St. Philomena, the church that Father Vianney had always longed to build. In 1905, Rome conferred on him the title of Blessed, and a little chapel in St. Philomena's church was dedicated to him. 
His body was placed in a reliquary over the altar, and the shrine became known for the miracles obtained through the intercession of the humble priest. The Pope had declared Blessed Jean Marie Vianney the patron of the parish priests of France, and they flocked to his chapel. Frequently masses followed in succession from dawn to noon. As priests went to the altar of the chapel of St. Philomena's Church, asking help in the performance of their duties from the priest, who had done his work so supremely well. In 1925 he was declared a saint. The Pope now announced that he was the patron of the parish priests of the world. From all over the world they came, singly and in pilgrimages. They prayed in the church and in the chapel. They saw the wooden confessional, where, through long and painful years, the curie of ours sacrificed himself to save more souls for God. They saw the old house, which had been his home. The house made dreadful so many nights by a furious, frustrated Satan. They saw the simple room where he died, unchanged since he had left it. They prayed that they might share the dedicated spiritual courage of the simple farmer's son, who could not learn, but learned. They thought of the obstacles in his path to ordination, obstacles which would have defeated a less valiant soul, but which he overcame. They remembered his tenderness to those in sorrow, his vigor with those in sin. They bowed their heads in recollection of the peasant Jean Marie Vianney, who for over forty years was the curie of ours, and who was now St. Jean Marie Vianney, beloved throughout the world. End of chapter 12. Recording by Maria Therese. End of The Man Who Fought the Devil by Eva K. Betts.